And I'm going to show my screen. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to share that though. Let's see here. That's your guys' grades. Uh, let's see what lesson 10 is that we're not going to look at. Okay. So tonight we're going to take a look at, uh, I think this is the first lesson on arrays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, single dimensional arrays, okay? And I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to open up Excel because I can, I don't have a chalkboard here. Oh, you know what? Hang on a second. Let me see something. Here's the locker puzzle. I don't want to show you that. Now, I'm just going to have to lecture you. All right, blank workshop. Blank. All right. So currently, let's just say this. I want to, uh, for you, with the tools you have right now, I would like to get everybody in this class, okay? I'd like to get all of your names and save them and then print them out after I have all of them. How many variables would I have to have? approximately. How many variables, if I just wanted to get one of your, your first name, but I need to save it to the end of the program. You'd need okay. like 20 different variables? Yeah, it would be 20 different variables. So not only would I have to declare those variables, but I would have to have 20 different prompts and 20 different uh, statements to get that value into the program. So you might be talking 60 lines of code at a minimum, and then to print them out. Okay, I need another 30 lines, of code, 20 lines of code to print everybody's name out. So we might be around, who knows, 80 lines of code or something to do that. Well, it's not the most efficient to say the least. It says we'd have to have like student one, student two, student three, student four, student five, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you'd have this big list here So coming down the side here, I'd have all these, whoops. See if this works. Let's just say 20. So there I'd have 20 variables. Okay. Which is kind of spooky, all right. And I'd have to declare each one of those as a string, you know? So this would be a string and whatever. Bring one and then I'd have to say, then I'd have to get your names and everything, right? So then down here I'd have uh, student one is equal to get next whatever. Well, that isn't very efficient, okay? Because I can do something like this. I can say string. This is a single dimension array. So it only has one set of braces. And then uh, students. And equal to new string and 
then 20, let's say. And that one line does the same thing as those 20 lines. Although it would be, I'd have student zero through student 19 because the array starts at zero. That one line of code does the same thing. Single dimensional array. Interesting. It is a very useful tool, but I think quite a bit of the class already knows the basics of arrays. So it's not as phenomenal as our first experience. With oh, arrays. no. So, and so again, you have that. Um, so then you can also do something like this. Let's just say that I have my, uh, so I can do a four. Uh, uh, int count or index. Don't let me catch you just putting an I in there. And an index is less than 20, or I can actually do student length. And then index plus plus. Okay. And then I could say something like, oops, I want to go back here. Uh, System dot out dot print line or print. Enter your name or your student's name. And then students square index square is equal to user in dot next. Okay, so now I've just got in every the 20 people's names. Does student dot length in this case represent the number of variables in it rem the no, it represents the number 20. Okay, but we don't have a 20th index. We have zero through 19. So that's why that's a less than sign versus a less than and equal to sign. Because if it starts going to look for a 20, a number 20, you're not gonna get it. Right, so it's just saying how many available slots there are in the array. I'm used to yes. saying seeing dot length represent the number of characters in a string. Same, same concept. Okay. Because did you know that the number of letters, characters in the string is an array of characters. Makes sense. Okay. And then once I'm done there, we just
And there I've printed all 20 of them out. So what did we say? We had like 80 lines of code in the other one. What do I have here? Even counting these, I got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines. Quite a bit more efficient. Notice again, too, that I'm using four next loops or counting loops. And in the chapters coming up, we'll use four each loops. And they know a four each loop can do the same thing we're doing here without even having numbers. You can just say for each one of these, the elements in this array, and it knows how many there are there, it'll do one thing for each element in that array, even without you putting any numbers in at all. Would you still just need a normal Oops, scanner? Oops, I did screw up. Here, hang on. You got an error here. Let's make this base equals zero. And that's that one. And then this one needs the same thing. Somebody asked the question, what was it? Would you still um, import just a normal scanner as well to accept the input? Oh yeah, because here's my scanner right here. I just didn't declare it. Okay. But I'd have to do that in both of them. I just didn't put it up there. I have a quick question just about for loops in general. Yeah. Uh, are you only allowed to increment by one in the for statement? So if I uh, want to do like, uh, for like the ISBN and for the other one, I was trying to do by two since it was like even and odd numbers. And I tried to do like in this example, I would do like index minus two because we were going from right to left. Okay. And it would it would error out every time. So I had to do index minus minus right there, and then I'd have to do index minus but minus. But did you where did you start your index? If you're gonna uh, go backwards, you would have to start at. First yeah, I started at the off. max, max, like I started at like length of the string. So it would, if like, if the input. Was I would that. think it should work, but I don't know what, I don't know how you programmed it. So I can't swear to it. But you should be able to do like counting down from, in a for loop, you should be able to do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what about like. I was saying, like, what if I wanted to put index plus two? So if I want to do zero, two, four, six, eight. Should be able to. Okay. Now you can't do that. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. You could skip. I mean, once you have it declared on how big you want it, you know, but you're going to air out at the end if it jumps to 22. See what I'm saying? If for some reason to stop it, um, let's say that you start at zero and, or, or one, let's say you start at one index at one and you start going by twos and you hit uh, la, 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 21, it may, it'd be 120, it'd be three. Yeah, it might air out at that point. I'd have to test it first before, I don't want to tell you something that isn't right. My okay. point here is what I'm trying to get across is that this is one dimensional array. And we're just saying, okay, right now, all you do is you have an X access. So we could put in names like Doug, Mary, Sue, Barb, John, Joe, oops, John Joe. Okay, single dimensional array has one set of rows. We have rows right now. We don't have columns. Later on, next week or the week after, we'll start talking about multi-dimensional arrays. Okay, so these will grow in size. And we can even have not only two dimensional, but three-dimensional arrays, 
Okay. I wouldn't go any more than three is kind is okay. You go to four and then you've got, um, you know, length, width, height, and time. And unless you're, unless you were Stephen Hawking, I would stay away from anything bigger than that. But I could still, if I wanted to here, so here's my students here. And then let's say I have, uh, oh, let's say grade. And so now what I could do here, okay, as you know, over here, if I'm still using this one, to put in a grade for each one of them to print at the end, now I need, I started with like 80 lines of code. Now I'm at 160. Okay. But I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to create what's called a parallel array. And some people say, don't do this. I say, if you need to do it, once you learn how to do multi-dimensional arrays, um, you won't need this as much, but you could do this. Watch, I could say int uh, grades equal to a new int at 20. Let's see here. Okay. So then here, I would say. Okay, and then this would be and of course I would want to have my have next in here. I'm not going to air check it right here, but you would want to have that there. Okay. So there I now I've got their names and their grades. And now down here, all I'm going to do is I think that's good. There you go. Now I've got the students' names and their grades coming down or So I could do that. And now I've got, what did I add? Two more lines. Joe, you got a question, buddy? Are, the, are these uh, technically matrices? So could you multiply and add them? You could later on. 
technically, again, this is a parallel array. So the, the only reason these are connected is because of the index number that they share. They really have nothing to do with, I mean, they're connected because I'm sharing an index number, but they're totally two different. This array has, is not connected to this array in reality. The only thing I'm doing is I'm connecting them by using the same index number. So if it was like 21 for either one of them, it wouldn't work? No, it would crash at 20. Because it's 0 through 19. OK. Now, later on, Joe, we're going to have where we're going to, it's going to be a matrix, OK? We'll have rows, columns, and in fact, we'll also have a third dimension, OK? Um, but I didn't want to, I'll do that lecture next week, I think. How many arrays can you set parallel to each other? Maybe a million. Yeah, I just but, didn't know if you could only put two inside no, that same but, thing or if you could do more. No, as long as I have the same, as long as they feed off that same index, I can, but don't, I mean, again, don't get hooked up on that because you're not going to use it very seldom will you use it. Okay. Because Excellent. once you learn how to do multidimensional arrays, I can create one array where the first uh, column here is the student, second is grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, their final grade, whatever. Then think of this one. Later on, we can do Major League Baseball, say. And in Major League Baseball, I could have the teams going one way, the players going another way, and the, stat, the statistics for the players going a third way. Yikes. So again, right here, I've created enough room for 40, 40 pieces of information. When you start doing it here with multiple dimensions, it grows geometrically. And, and, and again, I, I want to hold this speech for later next week, uh, but it's pretty amazing how much information that I'm going to tell you you can store in one array. Okay, so that's kind of what an array is, what it saves us from doing or having to do. I mean, this would be a pain in the butt over here. Okay, compared to this which does the same thing and produces the same output in what an A. An, and again, what if this was, I have 200 students. You know what I would have to do to do 200 students? How many lines of code would I need for 200 students? At least 200. No. At least 400. Right? Okay, let's just say that over there. Here, I'm going to make this for 200 people. Okay, I'm done. That array now holds 400 items of data. 400. Aren't those two separate arrays? Yes, they are, they're parallel. Okay, sorry, you just said that array holds 400. No, each of one data. of these way, hold 200 for a total uh, of 400. Checking. Again, over here to program that, if I couldn't use arrays and I wanted to save the data to the end, you can't print it out before then, I would need just to get the information without printing it out, Without doing anything else, I need 400 lines of code. No, 
400 and then 600 lines of code, I'm sorry. That's just getting it. That's not printing it out. Add another 200, that's 800 lines if I'm gonna print it out. And here I think I have 10, don't I? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 lines versus 800. How many am I gonna need if I need 2,000 names? I add a zero, I add a zero, I'm done. Pretty amazing, huh? All right, so we got that. So let's come over here. And I need to get rid of that. That's somebody's craps program. Uh, some of you guys have never been to the boat either. And <laughs> I'm laughing, don't, I'm just kidding, really. All right, so single dimensional arrays, locker game. I'm gonna help you with that one. Count single digit, count distinct digits. I like that one. Let's do the, I think we can do the distinct digit one in the time we got left. All right. So, oh, I don't wanna do that. Let me close this a little bit. And we're gonna call, go here, new project. And we'll say next, and it'll be distinct. Oops. Oh, man. Okay, now I can't type all of a sudden. Distinct digits. And by that I mean, let's say that I type in one, two, 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 three, 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 three. What are the distinct digits? One, two, and three. One, two, and three, exactly right. So we're not gonna have the user type those in. We are going to generate, uh, let's see, am, am I right there? Yeah, we're going to have the computer generate them for us because I wanna do like a hundred digits or that, or a thousand digits, something. So my project here is the Acme Distinct Digit Finder. And this will be equal to distinct digit dot java and the date will be today which is 15 dash sep dash 2020 and my author is me for you it's you and this is the program our purpose does anybody have that um how many digits am i supposed to a program I think it's a hundred or something. Well, that's what I'm gonna to do to randomly generate one hundred number digits from zero to nine and determine which ones are were distinctly generated. Example, if the computer generated 10 numbers of 
one nine 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 two three five what's that five six seven eight zero or zero four the distinct numbers would be one nine two i'm sorry one two three four five uh, nine and zero i think i'm right okay clean that up a little bit here I could put the zero at the beginning, actually. Maybe that looked nicer. Zero, one, two, three, four, nine. Okay. So we all understand what our program's going to do here? Yes. Or should. Should do. Yep. And then I should probably read the instructions for this program because I haven't. I'm just guessing what it says. <laughs> Anybody got a book in front of them? Yes. Uh, look at uh, 7.5 in your text. Yep, I'm here. Uh, what are you looking for? I just want to know what the program's supposed to do. So just read it to me. Uh, okay, it says, write a program that reads in 10 numbers and displays the number of distinct numbers and the distinct numbers in their input order and separate it exactly by one space. So the example they have is it says, enter 10 numbers and it has the users type it in. Then it says the number of distinct numbers is six, and it lists out what the distinct numbers are. And they are in order or in? They are in whatever order they were inputted. Uh, oh. They don't have a sorting algorithm for the uh, highest ones yet. Okay. Do we get into that later? Well, I want to see how I'm going to do this now. Because I had a different idea. Because it had uh, further 10 numbers. And I mean, we could have the user input okay. over, I guess. Yeah, that's what generation. we're going to do instead of doing this. So we're going to have the user allow a user to input. 10 digits from zero to nine and determine which ones are distinctly generated. Now are they, does it say they're inputting them one at a time? Uh, they have uh, it so it's one stream with spaces in between each number. Hmm. So, so how do we, to... How do we want to get our 10 numbers? Is my get what I'm asking, I guess. As in from the user as a stream and then just grab the specific characters from that stream? We could. Um, the problem with that is uh, that they could put in letters or other stuff. So we're going to have to check for that, okay? So this is going to be a longer program than I thought. So I'm going to get you started. How's that sound? Uh, so import our um, java.utility.scanner. Um, and uh, one more note, do we have to make a menu with multiple options for this or just um, repeat and quit? We can. So that even makes it harder yet. I don't know why my program does this every time I type that in. 
So what would be on the menu? Just a test thing, yeah. like the okay, yep. like so it would before. generate the ten numbers instead of them having to type them in. Or you could even hard code ten numbers in, you know, and then have it evaluate what that is. Okay. So, Luke, what page number was the? Um example on 281 or 281 so scanner um uh system in something like that and then i want to do this So it introduces what it is. I get a lot of programs from you guys and it'll just say, enter a number. Well, what kind of number? What do you want from me? It doesn't even tell me what the program is. I mean, I know what it is because you submitted it to do something. But if I was just some Joe Smo walking down the street and the computer, computer was sitting there and the program was running and it just says, enter a number. Well, what am I entering a number for? Okay, so I got a heading there. <sighs> and so this will be my input. And I am going to, let's see, I'll have to, I'm gonna have to, uh, I think I need a variable here. Um, that'll work, I think. You know what? It could be a long. How would that hurt us? Let's see if this will work. I'm going to change this. I don't know if an int, let's see, is 3 billion. Or is billions, okay, but, so that isn't gonna work because nine would be millions, 8,000. Oh yeah, well, this could be an int, I think. Okay, 10 digits. So now I'm gonna change this to, while not user input 
dot as next int Well, how are we going to put spaces in there? Oh, it just says you when you print them out, dude. That's easy. That is not a problem. Oh, okay. So we're going to have the user put in 10 digits in a row with no spaces That's it. in them. Yep. Okay. That's not how the book has it. Uh, just want to clarify that. But Oh, they're having them put them in with spaces in between them? Yeah. And I mean, we don't have to if no, you know, we don't. this is easier. So, this is, yeah. easy. well, I'm not saying this is easier. I'm just, I'm winging this right at this point now because I never written this program this way. This is my print uh, line. Okay, and then once it gets them down here, it'll be numbers are equal to this next int, wasn't it? And I'm going to test this and see what happens at this point. See if it in fact crashes. So one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. That works okay. And then let's see if it what it does if you put in an A, B, C. Okay. So then it resets. If so you that's, if your number starts with a nine, it's it's gonna break because it's nine billion. Oh, it ain't taking it. Yeah, it, it for me it says that is not a valid ten digit set of digits okay. since it's not an integer. All right, so hang on a minute. Because nine so ten would be nine billion, wouldn't it? So go back in and just change this to long. Oh come on, I have my insert. Where is it? And then down here, this will be next long. Again, you could take this in as a string if you wanted to. Uh, that would be the other way to do it. Okay, so nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, 
That worked for me. Why didn't mine work? You have to change the uh, user input. Dot next oh, dot I got it. Yeah, sorry. Next long. There we go. Do, 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 do. I need seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Da da. Okay. So that's the first thing we want to do. Then I think what I want to do is I want to make. I'm going to have another variable. It's going to be a string digits. Something like that. And then I'm going to go over here. And again, I always forget this. Uh, go away. Okay, long two string. That's all I need. So this works up to here. And then digits to check is going to be long string uh, numbers. Uh, and then let's see if we can print that. There you go. And that's a string I'm printing out there, right? And then if to, uh, what was it, 10. And then I'm going to indent all of this. And I'm going to come right here, whoops, and put a do right there. And then I'm going to come down here. 
than that. All right, now let's see what that does. Okay, so if I put in nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, works fine. If I put in A, B, C, says that's not valid. If I put in one, two, three, let's say you must input a set of 10 digits and then it says enter your set of 10 numbers. And let's see if in fact, if I do it, it should go back out. Voila. So now it, it does three things. We get the, the information. It checks to see whether or not it's a 10 digit number. I'm sorry, it checks to see if it's digits, all digits. It then checks to see, uh, what else does it? Oh, it converts the numbers into a string. Then it checks to see if in fact the string is 10 characters long. If it isn't, it kicks them back into the system and they have to go through it again. So how's that? Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, you said you could just initially put it in as a string, correct? Yeah. So then you would. But then need... you're still going to have to check if it's a digit or not, because if you have, if somebody puts in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, B, C, what are you going to do? Right, it'd be, it'd be wrong. I just didn't know if there's an advantage to initially putting in it as a long or not. I, well, I'm just thinking of ways to do it. I mean, there's more ways to do it than what I'm doing. Right, I just, I just double checking. Okay. But I got mine in a string now. So now I can pick off the digits one by one, right? In a loop. Right. So... It said it wanted us to um, have them as distinct, okay? So in the order, so that isn't gonna be too hard. It's shorter than I thought. So we're gonna put them in here. We're gonna have a string array. Um, called uh, distinct nums or something like that is equal to a new string and we'll put it at um, 10. Now, if I didn't want to use the zero spot, I could do that too. Okay. But in this one, zero makes, because we're going to have a zero. You know what? Eh, maybe it doesn't. If that's the first one, I put it in there. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So I've declared that now. So now I'm going to have a loop. that does this, I think for int index is equal to zero, then uh, let's do this too. Um, uh, int, and it's gonna be
blah, 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 blah. Where do I have 10 at? And then equal to the number of digits is 10. And then four index is that. And then index is less than num of digits. Index plus plus. Okay. So now. We can go ahead mm, this is gonna be ugly let me think here for a second okay so if they want I can pick them out real I could do it real easily if I don't do the order in which we put them in it. In other words, I can say if they put in like five, four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 I can easily make it do one, two, three, four, five as the distinct. That I can do. Putting them in in the right order is giving me a little bit of a headache. So you think about, for, I need a small break here real quick. And you guys think about. I think he's going to look up the sorting algorithm that we haven't went over yet. All right, sorry about that. You guys could have talked among yourselves. Anybody got an idea? I mean, what we basically have to do is we take the first number. That one we don't really have to check because we know as a fact that, that that's distinct, right? So that one, we're gonna put in, uh, so if I do that, I can say that 
what I call my array, distinct nums. So distinct nums index. Oh, here. Let's do this. If, you know what? We can put that in the first up here, actually. Before we do anything else, we can say uh, distinct nums zero. is equal to or is assigned um, digits to check dot char at zero. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So, but I got something wrong here. Would you put um, num of digits at zero or zero? Uh, and then are you just going to put that in a loop? The same kind char cannot be converted to a string. Oh, uh, yeah, you I'm need saying. to do the two string on the end. Yeah, let's see if this will work. Doesn't like that either. Let me pull up my thing. I can. It should just be, that's what I want. I want that in there as a string. Or should I make that a char? Should distinct numbers be chars? That, I, that might solve my problem right there. No, I don't like that. String da 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 da. That has to be char there. Okay. So then I can get rid of this. So that picks off the first one. So then this is going to change to index one. Okay, so then I need a loop inside of here, or let's see. Why, why did you make the index one? Well, I need to go through and do the same thing for all so now that I've got one in there, I have to check to see if any of the others are that same number before I save it. Okay. So could you, we just do another for loop within the for loop for the characters of the. Yeah. And that's my plan here, I think. Come on. Okay, subtracted one there because we're starting at one. 
here, though I think it's less than num of digits. Or will it read itself there? Well. Wouldn't we still want to go all the way up to the number of digits for the initial for loop? Well, here, if you do it 10 times or zero through 10, you're going to crash because you already got rid of one here. I think. No, well, let's, we can try it. So index one, so we want to compare it to zero. And how are we going to get it so it doesn't count itself? Somebody has an idea, you better talk. So I'm like, okay, so there's that. Can we just do an if statement if count equals index? Uh, never mind. No. Well, you can do if. Um, Hmm. Couldn't we just create a whole new array and populate that array based on whether the previous or the next number is greater or less than the current number? And just loop it all the way through and populate the new array according to that? Well, you could. Um, but again, I don't know how that's going to solve our problem. Why do we even have two arrays in the first place? We only have one. Okay, then why do we have two for loops? Well, how are you going to compare the number? Okay, here, let, that's what I asked you before. Can't you just use index in both of it? Okay. Both of them. Okay, what do you want me to do? Well, if you're trying to compare uh, both of them, we have the, we don't have all the characters in distinct nums yet, right? We only have it uh, well, I can in the do that. zeroth position. I can do that here. So first, I guess let's put all of them in the array. Okay. So that goes back to zero. And then this it turns into index. And then this turns into index. And now they should be in there. 
Yes. But we don't want all of them in there. We only want distinct ones. So we want to we want to take one oh, at a time. Okay. We want to take the first one and put it in there, and then we want to check take the second one and test it against what is in there. Right. So it would be the next. See, it's a minus one all the time. So I think I had it right where I put the that like that. And then if, oh, I know what it is. If digits, digits, um, to check. The whole goal here is just to make sure we put it in ascending order, right? No, you don't want them in order. You want them in the order that they were. If it was in ascending order, I wouldn't have any problem at all. I could do that in a minute. But they have to be in the order that um, they were entered in. This might work. Wouldn't we want to set it equal to, are you going to do like a Boolean, like a false or true statement? No, I'm just going to do this. If the digits, as we go through here, if 10 is not equal to the next, let's see. But as long as it's not equal to one of them, in that case, it's going to, it's going to real. See, this is going to change all the time. We don't want that. We want yeah. it to go through one at a time. So you need another loop in the middle. Yep, you need another loop. So I need a loop here that's like int count is equal to zero. Index is less than the number of digits count plus plus I don't know how I keep getting that now this will be index this will be count right Or if it is equal to, let's see. Yeah, because we want to run through all of them. And if, if it equals true even one time, then we do not add it to the array. Exactly. So we can put, let's do a Boolean flag. So if this one is ever equal to that, right? Then is found is equal to true. And so then it comes out of that loop here. So then we would assign it to the so we need it to be an else statement. We could. Well, well it's outside.
slope index. Am I right on that index? Is assigned um, Am I right with that? The other question is, should I set that back down to zero and not worry about that? Or will that throw us off? In other words, go ahead. The same effect. I think you could, because as long as it's checking the... So if I did that and make this a zero, I think that might work, right? Yeah, because it doesn't really matter if it's checking the nine or... So then time. when I get done with this whole thing, this is a cluster, I tell you. Uh, Oh, I could have just print. I think I can just do this, actually. I forget if I can or not in this language. No, I'll just do this. Oh, you wanted it with a uh, space in between it, right? So I can do F and then Distinct nums num. I'm sorry. Um, percent C. Let's see, and then a space like that, I think. That should do it, I believe. Let's see if we get it. This will be amazing if this works. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, did that part. Uh, see, I'm out of bounds there somewhere in one of these. So we knew it was good up to there. It's good up to there. Mine ran, but it output every single number. But we got somewhere mine is going over the number of digits for some reason. Zero plus plus.
could we just for a quick test put like 40 indistinct nums? Where at? Uh, just for the array size of distinct nums. Oh, I raise it up, you mean? Yeah. So like... Yeah, we can put... We can put just to see if that's the issue or that's yeah, what's 15. being over. Wouldn't, wouldn't you have to fit, uh, change it to 15 and the final int as well? You're right. Because it tries to match the length of the Where do you want me? Oh, why was it giving you an error uh, in the beginning before we even messed with the array? So uh, we should have been sent a, hey, that's not valid message, right? No, because we never, it, we don't have a problem up here. Hang on. We do now because I screwed something up. It's, you don't have a. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's still, what happened? I didn't have an error here before. You had num in the brackets. Oh. Where? Inside in the brackets. brackets after distinct nums. Oh, I had here? Oh, yeah. yeah. But Bender, it works up until also, I'm wondering, is it stops checking for length where we last knew it was working, correct? So I got three, six, nine. Can you ten. put in like two digits real quick? See, this is fine. Yeah, but shouldn't it be checking for 15 digits now instead of 10? No. Because I have it set up. <laughs> See, it's set up for 10. Okay, got it. I thought that was based off the size of the character. So array. we're good up to there. What's happening is it says my index 10 is out of bounds for length. And it is. But where is that at? Where am I going to 10? I didn't see where I'm at 10. Less the number of digits. Okay, sorry. I thought number of digits was based off the distinct nums uh, array size. So what if I put 15 here? Wouldn't that where you put just put 15 have to match the distinct nums 15 or whatever number you put there? No, because I don't have to put anything in them. I just leave them blank, I think. Oh, yeah, I got an error there because of this 15. That's that's thing. what I was thinking yeah, the yeah, issue would have been. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know that. how I connected the array size to but the... Why am I getting... See, I'm out of bounds. That's the problem right now. Okay. Can you see what line you're out of bounds in? I might or... be able to. Hang on a second. So if I run it again, and I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. It says exception index 10, 10 is out of line. Distinct line 57. Let's see if that, what is that? Maybe it has to be less than or um, equal to. I don't think okay. so. I think it can't be this equal to. I have that. I had the same code as you did there, and mine's running fine. So yours is running now. Mine was running from from the beginning. I'm not sure. I'm trying to like 
quickly look at your screen as you scroll and see what the difference is, and I haven't seen anything. Is it producing what we want? No, no, it's, it's putting out every single number regardless, but it's at least running. Okay, so tell me what you have that I don't. What did I change that you didn't? So where's the spot where you said we're good through? So if you go to like numbers, I'm equal good to user input. I'm good to hear. I know that is a fact because that's checking for the, and we ran that and it ran fine. Uh, are you missing a bracket after this for statement? I've got the one second. here. And I am. That one goes there. That one goes there. Right? Yeah, could that have been it? I mean, could have been. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm getting 58. Okay, see if you can see the difference between mine and yours. Why I don't see anything different. But. Okay. So Oh, you have index. You have for count equals zero, index is less than number of digits. It should be count is less than number of digits. See that? That's We're close, good. sir. We are. It seems to be okay. Okay. Well, that's where I'm going to leave you guys. So you're down to here. It's printing out, but it's just putting the four in every one of them. So this right here, this check is what you need to fix at this point. Yeah, it's for some reason it's just outputting the last number you input yep. for every single digit. Yep. And so then what it's doing is it isn't finding them as equal to one another here. So then it's putting them in here. This is not happening. So the problem is right here. Well, and I think it's overriding every single index. Well, it so. is because of this right here. We could try state nums. And started at one. Hmm. So backspace that real quick and then start this at one. Let's see how, what kind of damage I get. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Same difference. Oh, no, I got one and four now. Okay, the one's there, but these aren't. So again, 
I think it's right in here, okay? No matter what you do. For some reason, we should print out right here. You should print out, not even there, right here. and then print a space and then come over here and put plus. This is gonna print a lot. Do, 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 do. So if it does that, so here. What is happening? So the first time it's printing that. So you can see I got a one and a one here. And then it checks all the other ones. And then what happens? I don't think that's where I wanted that. Well, here's all the numbers coming down the side of the, hmm. Well, like I said, I'm gonna let you guys work on this one. It's all done, except for putting this in a loop, or I'll tell you what, you get it going even at this point and it'll be good. Don't worry about a, a menu or anything. How's that sound? Okay. But I can tell you that here's your problem in here. Because okay. other, otherwise it wouldn't write over. It's right, this right here is writing over everything. Because it's not checking here. So it kicks it down here. And every time it goes through, it puts the, a, a number over the top. if I'm not mistaken. See, is found here. Used. Why isn't it used? Oh, because I initialized it. Maybe that's why. No, still not it's saying is found is not used. Hmm. It's gotta be somewhere right here. Well, what does is found do? It turns true, but what does that entail afterwards? Oh yeah, we don't use it, do we? No, uh, shouldn't we like add that to an array or have an if statement afterwards that if is found, then do something? How about this? 
if is I don't think that's, I still think it's this line here. Unnecessarily continue. Okay, it says we don't even need that. It says do nothing if you do that, and else you can do that. Uh, my guess would be it's gonna do the same thing though. Yep. So it's right here somewhere because this is where it's putting them in the index. And it's just writing right over the top of, it's hitting this every time. I'll show you, if I do that, So we're saying if it does not equal the uh, any of the things that are saved, then put it in one of the array spaces. In other words, here. So let's say I got those ones right. So here's what I put in. I put in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and a four. So now here's my array here. It's got 10 things in it, okay, or 10. So this is one or zero. This is one. So these are my elements. Up to nine. So the first time through, it should put the one there and it does. Okay, the next one goes in and it should see that there's a one there, so it should skip it. Same thing, it, should, it sees a one there, it should skip it. Then this one, it's a two, it looks there, oh, well, that's only a, and there's nothing else in here. Okay, so it puts the two here. The next one, next two goes, well, I'm not a one. So what would, uh-oh. There's your problem. Because if it says that this is not equal to this, this is now gonna become a two. And then this would be and I think it would exit out of there. Then those would skip, and then I'd have a three. And it would say, well, that's not a three, so I'll make that a three. I'll make that a three. Then four, I, I, something like that anyway. Got it. Okay. So going back, there's something here that we have goofed up. So I think we need to get rid of that else statement. Where are we at? Um, I think within the if statement, we should set the is valid or is found a true. Okay. So then we want to get out of the for loop. And then do it. And then do it. Otherwise, we're just consistently overwriting. I think you're right. Let's try that. Yeah, and so I'm then it would be an if statement outside of the for loop. Yep. Well, is it out of both of them? I think it's just out of the, this, the, the inner one. one. Yeah. All right. So then if we come here and say, if is found
Now we're gonna have to reset that though. Up here, I think. So we make his found equal to false here. And so if found is equal to true down here, or no, false, then we go ahead and put it in, right? Yeah. So then this comes out of there, goes in there, we get rid of that. but this is gonna be index and we don't need, um, ooh, what are we gonna do with this? Oh, come on, I'm pressing on the, if I do that, then I can, oh, here, we can do this. Now that works there. This goes with what? That there, and that's right. Hmm. Why am I only getting a one? Change that back to zero. Get rid of that. I don't think that's a difference though. Well, no, I'm not getting anything. What's that? We need that int count at the top to be something. Like, are you saying it's set to zero? Well, I got to reset it to zero, I believe. Yeah, but then when we're doing the if is found equals false, false and we're doing character at count, we're just automatically getting zero. Where are you at now? Uh, line 69. No, because we're incrementing it right here. But doesn't that only exist? Oh, that form? does. Yeah, what the hell are we gonna do with that? And then- oh, Here, uh, we can do this, we can do this maybe. We're only gonna get to that if found equals false if, uh, the account is completely finished. No, he's right though, that count, we can't use count here. Unless we switch those. No, he can't do that either. Because the outer one has to be, I think, it does yeah. The outer one has to be the array, I believe. Because we don't want to put, redo the array every time we want to do. So if we do that. Forgot to initialize count. I did. I mean, count here. Uh, at least I think he's saying in that for loop if we're not going to use it.
No, and I had it. I had this before. So now it's initialized. But this is outside of that loop. So I need to put it some, I need to get, you need to get something here. Don't we put index there? I don't. Because we're comparing the uh, number at, I mean, the letter at index with um, all no. the nums that are in count. Yeah, I think he's right. I think that should be character at index. Um, but I don't know the index makes sense to be in the distinct nums then. Yeah, then shouldn't this one be count? Yes. But I can't do that either. Well, then let's have a new variable that increments for however many. Uh, so in is found, okay, right under is found equals fault. Well, outside of all of this, let's have a new int that equals zero. And then we add uh, where index is in distinct nums right now. Uh, right under that, we just do counter plus plus. That way it starts at zero and puts it in zero. And then the next time it finds a number, it puts it in um, one and so on. So putting counter plus plus underline 69. Uh, I don't know if counter's in a good position though, but. because we don't want counter to reset to zero uh, every time this gets back to the top of the for loop. Where do you want me to put it to one here? Uh, no, uh, right down on line 71, put counter in distinct nums. Oh, but I have to, if it's found as false, then the counter then we'll in, increment, then we increment it, it. Yeah. after we put the thing in the index. Oh, okay, because it'll start at zero the first time, and yeah, then we exactly. can move it. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, I just ran exactly that and that did it for us. I'm not getting anything. Fantastic. <laughs> I got mine to work. I'm not sure. I, I was kind of doing it on my own. I didn't follow along. Oh, with what you, you forgot did. to put counter in the uh, line distinct 72 nums. distinct nums. Oh. Duh. No. Okay, so it's working for you, Joe. Uh, this is Andrew. It's working for me. Sorry. What do you got, Andrew, that we don't? Um... Maybe something with the is found if statement, the one at line 62. Uh, yeah, you have equals. You're, you're assigning equals false as opposed to testing. Oh, oh on 69. 
It's cray cray, I'm telling you. There you go with the space. We did it, read it. Okay. So this is all on tape. So those of you who did not type this thing, uh, you have a total um, video of it. And you guys did great. Help me out. I'm going to stop recording now.